Yes, that's fine.
This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the Down Borough Council, Monday, November 2nd, 2020. Uh, this is Mayor Jason Salento. Uh, Dr. Robbins, can we have a call to order and a pledge of allegiance, please? Thank you, Mayor. Oh, pledge of allegiance first, I apologize. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Speaking as well, the meeting of November 2nd, 2020 was advertised in the Courier on January 2nd, 2020, and as a teleconference was again noticed on the official Benelli website on October 26th, on the public bulletin board on Park Avenue on October 26th, and again advertised in the Courier again on October 26th. Take a roll, Mayor Salento. Present. Council President Baer. Here. This is Burke. Here. Dr. Dunn. Here. Mrs. Morrison. Present. Mrs. Rios. Here. Mr. Sigma. Here via go to meeting. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes of the October 19th, 2020 meeting? Move it for second. Now, Mr. Questions, take a roll, Mr. Baer. Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Morrison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. Okay, number four, we have appointments to boards, commissions, and authorities, the Mayor's Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Task Force. Um, I want to thank everybody who volunteered, and I know you guys will do a good job. Um, so I know the next piece is to do some educational pieces with keep the middle section moving. So I thank uh, Council Member Stacey Norrison to help lead the way on that. Um, before we get to item number five, which is the introduction of an ordinance, um, I just want to make a quick uh, note that tomorrow we will have an election across our nation, our state, and our borough. Um, I do say if you are upset with how things are being managed, a ballot box is where you should make it known. Debate and dialogue is another key piece in our electoral process of sending an anonymous letter and vandalizing a candidate's home is not a sign of respect to that process. In fact, I would go far as saying it's a sign of cowardice. Um, as a community, we need to come together regardless of an outcome of an election and move our town, our state, and our country forward. Um, we will respect the outcome of the election as that's what this town deserves. And we will move forward. Because, well, for me, that's the only way I know how to is because I love this community. I know we all love this community to serve it. And I know we can speak for every single way. One was inappropriate. from it because it was strong. So that's what I have to say about that. And can we mute the public until the public is on? Unless Paul, is that you? No, it must be on you. Okay. Um, item number five, we have an ordinance of introdu an introduction for 2020-15, gave the cable franchise renewal. No? I have a motion, please, uh, to introduce 2020-15. Uh, Move it. Mayor. Um, um, this is the the uh, Maltese USA cable vision uh, franchise agreement. Um, this is being renewed. This is the introduction of it. We'll have a public hearing and adoption at the next council meeting. Um, 
the public, I just want you to be aware this is a non-exclusive agreement. We do not uh, discourage other people's services to bring it to town. In fact, we've made overtures. Um, as that option comes into town, we will continue to work to get them into town. Underneath this, underneath this agreement, though, we did receive an increase of grant to the town, which was $10,000. They tried cutting us down to $8,000, but we were able to uh, negotiate um, $15,000. So I want to give um, kudos to Dr. Robbins, who also assisted in that negotiation. We were able to get 11 boxes for free for the borough, as well as free of charge of the entirety of this contract, which will save the town thousands of dollars uh, that we have been paying, um, as well as two locations. Can you please mute the, can you please mute your computers? Or phones. And we will also be receiving two locations with high-speed internet, one being Borough Hall and the other being the Dinello Public Library. So that's what we were able to obtain within the the negotiations. Um, so, the rest of the public is aware. The red light. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. I'll take a roll, Mr. Fair. Yes. Mrs. Burke. Yes. Dr. Dunn. Yes. Mrs. Narvison. Yes. Mrs. Rios. Yes. Mr. Sigma. Yes. Item number six. Yes. Oh, sorry. Happy <laughs> there. Item number six, we have an ordinance, public hearing and adoption, 2020-14, amended off-duty ordinance. Move it. Second, done. Oh, yes, at this time, we'll open the floor to the public for any comments or questions regarding 2020-14, amended off-duty ordinance. Without hearing any, that portion is closed. Dr. Robbins, please take a roll. Take a roll, Mr. Bayer? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Harbison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigma? Yes. Okay. Now we have uh, resolutions. Dr. Robbins, please go through the resolutions. Have a motion to take the bill? Move it, Bayer. Second, Dunn. Mr. Bear? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Harbison? Yes. Mr. Frios? Yes. Mr. Sigma? Yes. No motion on number two. Uh, this is a recognition of the appointments of deputies for the Office of Emergency Management. Move it first. Second, Harbison. I just have a quick question on the timing of this. Some of these appointments were made nine months ago. Um, what the, the process is for these appointments? Uh, there is no established process. Uh, Homer Mosley has taken an extremely active role in pulling the OEM together uh, and under his uh, leadership, let's call it that. Uh, he's, uh, uh, ask uh, at least three and even more will join deputies. Uh, it's under her, his purview to appoint the deputies. In the past, we never had deputies or maybe just an occasional one. And so this situation has not come up. Uh, it has some bearing because at least it's proof that uh, if they're injured in uh, on call at an incident, uh, wherever they are, at least we can show the insurance company and anybody else who asks that they are official. And so it's uh, memorialized. And then I guess my follow-up to that would be that if, then if that's the rationale, that if we could do this in the future in a timely fashion, I, I completely understand the last nine months have been uh, crazy, especially for Homer and OEM. Um, but uh, no, we will certainly do that now that we have a precedent. Uh, it was just recently that Homer thought to ask, and I had not thought of it myself. So that's the timing explanation. Okay, thanks for the clarification. <laughs> okay, if there are no other questions, we'll take a roll, Mr. Bayer. Yes. Mr. 
Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Marvison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mrs. Sigmund? Yes. No motion on number three. This is a resolution requesting permission uh, from the Department of Community Affairs for the a dedication by writer for what's called the Accumulated Absences Liability Trust Fund. Move it. Okay. That's a Mr. Fair and Mrs. Burke? Yes. Okay, thank you. There are no questions. I will take a roll. Mr. Thayer? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Marvison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. I motion on number four, this designates or re designates, designates Michael Iello as a class A operator. Move it, Dunn. Second. Take a roll. Mr. Thayer? Yes. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Harbison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mrs. Sigmar? Yes. And I have a motion on number five. This authorizes Municipal Attorney John E. Bruder to make an offer to DAFCO North Small LLC for easements on the uh, property located at 665 North Avenue. Move it first. Second, Harvison. Are there any comments or questions? This is the culvert, right, Bill? Yeah. Yes, this is the railroad culvert. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're acquiring an easement, and then since we've had no response to date, a meaningful response, we are now going to we have the appraisal. We just received that last week, so now we will extend an offer to acquire the easement. And how long do they do they legally have any time to respond, given their lack of response previously? Or I don't know if there's a set statutory time. Okay. We will give them a reasonable amount of time, and if it's not accepted, then we will proceed. Okay. For the legal action. We're good. I'll take a roll. Mr. Thayer? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Marvinson? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. Uh, we now are at the point for the consent agenda. Uh, we will take six resolutions, six through 12, with number eight, all being removed by me. Uh, with one single motion and second. If there's anybody who would like me to remove one of these from the consent agenda, please say so now. I have uh, um, a price adjustment. Uh, On the uh, super roofing. Which resolution is that? Number uh, six. Number six. So we can just remove that one and then handle that separately and then go through the rest of the consent agenda. Yes. All right, so I'm going to uh, remove, uh, oh, number six. Okay, so seven through 12 with eight removed. Could I have a motion and a second? Move it first. And to clarify, this is done proving that by way of consent and the items that are seven through 12. Is that correct? That is yes. correct, seven through 12. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll take a roll. Mr. Thayer? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Marvison? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. And back to six. Can I have a motion and a second on an amended 10 19 22 number six uh, in the order? Contract for firehouse gutters. Second, sir. Now we would would make it have a motion from the floor to amend it and just indicate specifically what that amendment is. Uh, so the price change will be um, $8,288. The motion to change price is 8288 
And that's under the peak of the group, right? Yes. So there's a motion to be right. Eight two eight eight. That was actually yeah, it was eight five seven five now it's being amended to eight two eighty. Supposed to be increased. Eight five to eight two. Okay, that's clarification. So, so I, this was the second. This was the second quote that they gave us. This was not the first quote. Is that? Yes. Okay. Now, can you clarify, please? This is the second quote. I was notified that the price had increased in the past year. I have created an amended resolution of which is in front of you, and that is the number that I received from the crucial people. Mr. Rios tonight has notified me in clever bargaining. You've been able to reduce that increase by half. And the number she is now presenting to council for an, an amount not to exceed in the reward is eight to eight. Thank you, Council Member. Is there, is there a motion to adopt it as amended? Move it. Uh, I'm sorry, let me. Okay. We had a motion and a second to amend it. We didn't take a vote on it, though. No, you don't take a vote because now there's a superseding motion to amend the resolution that is on the floor. Yes. But now there's, a, there's been a motion by Mr. Bayer. There needs to be a second. Second. But it's a motion to adopt it now as a further amendment, Bill. Maybe a better way to say it. And that further amendment supersedes the first amendment. Correct. Basically sends that one out in case nothing will be done with that now that you've been in a second. To amend it, there's a vote to be taken on this. And just to, for clarification's sake, given that the amount is below the $17,500 bid threshold, the, the bid threshold is the, the bids are not. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Uh, Mr. Baer has made a motion and I interrupted. Could there uh, please hear a second? Me, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Perk. Okay, so very good. And I'll take a roll. Uh, Mr. Baer? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Parkinson? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigma. Yes. Uh, Robin, we have item number eight on the discussion. Best practices inventory. Is Mr. Olson leading this conversation for you or? I don't think Mr. Olson is present tonight. Uh, if he is, he can speak up and let us know. If not, I'm prepared to uh, do the presentation. Sounds good. Thank you. Alrighty. Uh, Council, have you seen this? And most of you have seen this in the past. Uh, each year, the Department of Community Affairs promulgates what's known as the best practices inventory and distributes it uh, to all 565 municipalities in New Jersey. It is designed to ascertain the status of municipal government practices in New Jersey. The inventory ostensibly assesses each municipality's compliance with various laws and evaluates implementation of fiscal and operational best practices. The inventory is regarded as one way taxpayers can evaluate their municipality's performance. This year, there were 29 scored questions and 31 unscored questions, in, generally in a survey format. Some of the topics were personnel, budgeting, financial administration, capital projects, transparency, authorities, procurement, websites, cybersecurity, shared services, pilots, and affordable housing. The unscored questions contained opportunities for a municipality to request from the DCA additional training or advice. The state of New Jersey can withhold some of our discretionary aid if we do not answer a sufficient number of questions positively. This year, we answered 22 out of the 29 questions perspective. Uh, so we will receive full funding. Uh, 
So on those core competencies, I noted that um, a number of them were in the area of um, cybersecurity. Um, I know we had the um, the IT assessment and bonded earlier this year for um, some additional uh, purchases and, and requirements in that area. Are, um, are there plans to increase our cybersecurity for our borough? Uh, uh, networks? Dr. Dunn, that's an excellent question. I happen to be compromised that we met with the IT vendor, TK1, Mr. Fair, Mr. Miller, Ms. Roth, and myself just last week. I had had a chance to review and initially answer the best practices survey and did see that there were cybersecurity related questions. I ask these questions both of our current IT people and of TK1. And I may note that uh, TK1 would be able to provide a, a, an acceptable, if not superior, level of cybersecurity. So, in anticipation of our next step, that question has been asked in satisfactorily. Thank you. Any additional questions regarding uh, the best practices? Now, that's something that I think the council might have to acknowledge having reviewed and signed off on. Uh, not in written form, not like uh, the affidavit for the budget. However, there is uh, a date, which is today's date, that I will put onto the form. It turns out that the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Olson, gets to push the button and upload it, and he'll do that tomorrow. It's due on Thursday. So, uh, uh, yes, this presentation is necessary, and that's why it's part of the agenda. Okay, so just have one more comment. This is more for um, the public if they are reading this and looking this. Item number 25, best practices, which is the anti-nepotism policy. So Finance and Administration Committee is working on a anti-nepotism policy that hopefully will be implemented by the end of the year. Another point to ensure we get our state aid. <laughs> so congratulations to Nell, we're getting our full funding from the state. Um, if there's no other questions from council, we'll move on to council reports. Okay, council member Rios, anything to report to you? You're welcome. Council member Burr. Sure, I have a few things, thank you. Um, just to start off, the fire department was pleased to hear that they are, uh, their parking lot is part of the mail and gate program. So again, thank you for pushing that through. Uh, they did have a couple of concerns, just to put on record, um, in regards to the retaining wall. Um, having to be done with parking lot paving. So just to kind of keep that I guess in mind as we move forward with that project. And also they just wanted to know about the parking lot being straight after it was paved if that could be taken into consideration with the interior and stuff. So just putting that out there. Uh, they will also be selling Christmas trees. They can be expected around Thanksgiving. Um, so look out for those. Um, our police department will be participating in no shade no November to uh, raise awareness of men's health issues. This year, they are raising funds to honor former Chief Capella um, by giving a scholarship to a graduating student. So I think that would be great. Um, I'm sure you guys can put out a leaf or something so people can donate to that. And it's really, really nice to do, I think, in honor of Chief Capella. Um, also, I was made aware of some social media conversation in regards to traffic enforcement and speeding down streets. I just want to make the public aware that Chief Smith came to um, the police committee last year and wanted to acquire the digital speedometers and purchase those, um, which we were able to purchase at the beginning of this year. Uh, those have been placed at different points in the community, at the borough. Um, they're able to last for about a week or two before they need to be recharged. If you are a member of the public and you feel as though you need enforcement on your street, I encourage you to reach out for our police department. They are very receptive, they will listen to you, and maybe your street can be added to the list based on priority for these to go. Um, Chief and his department will collect the data from these and they will determine when and if an officer should be placed to run traffic enforcement. Um, we still do not have a social media 
committee meeting is set up. So, Councilman Sigmund, if you could just let us know of a good date for you, we would like to get that Facebook page pushed out before the end of the year, as I know it's one of the mayor's goals. Um, and just lastly, I just want to thank uh, OEM and Homer Mosley. Um, they're doing good things for our community. They have set up a comfort treat at PTO Halloween, providing information on preparedness, which we obviously need. Um, Mr. Mosley is also working to create a meeting for us as um, elected officials to understand the role and function of OEM, which is great to educate us and what's happening. Um, and so I just want to say thank you for that. Other than that, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Barron. I have no report with, with in uh, regard to the finance, but I do want to report on the fire damaged house that everyone sees when they go to Columbia Park. Um, as of today, we'll start to accumulate fines for non-compliance. Those of you that have not seen it come down. That's what's going on with that. Uh, we also received official word that the art color project has received all the necessary approvals and as soon as the bonds are posted the building permits will be issued and it's off to the races um, and that'll cover it thank you thank you uh, member Dunn. uh yeah i have a, a few things uh today first of all i would like to wish uh, council president bear a very happy uh birthday <laughs> um, uh, uh, also want to thank and acknowledge the parking authority there were uh, some questions about parking and meters on uh, front street so i want to thank them for their their timely response and working with uh, the borough on on those questions um Quickly, um, before I start my DPW report, um, for Councilwoman Burke and the fire department, when you are uh, in need of striping or when you think you will be, please reach out to the DPW manager, Alex Miller, to get that on the DPW's um, schedule for the striping of the lot. Um, for the DPW report, um, the crew has continued cleaning downtown streets and sidewalks, daily park cleanups. Um, made multiple roll-off trips to the dump after the last weekend of house garbage season ended, and hopefully that will be the end of our old roll-off, and we can retire that and put it in the graveyard where it belongs. Um, very grateful that they filled up potholes uh, in town, and we'll continue following, filling more potholes in the um, upcoming weeks. Uh, and just a reminder to residents that there is a process. If you know that there are potholes, again, please contact Alex Miller. He will put those on the list and they will be uh, filled accordingly. Uh, I mean, we don't know about them. We can't uh, fill them. Um, we, the DBW is continuing to make rounds, picking up branches and leaf beds, uh, again, and working with PSENG on a tree removal on Dun Ellen um, uh, Ave. Uh, clearing the catch basins, walking the brooks, and checking the headwalls prior to the storm earlier uh, late last week. Uh, and also serviced uh, the police chief vehicles, uh, patrol vehicles, uh, and worked on more trucks and repaired one of our mowers. So we're very grateful to have a mechanic now in our department. We know that that's an asset, and thanks to police and fire for continuing to utilize that service. Um, uh, also pleased to note that we had a meeting uh, last Friday that Mayor Salento, Councilwoman Rios, and I uh, sat in on uh, with uh, members of the community who want to start a diversity and inclusion committee. Um, so we're looking forward to bringing that to council, uh, hopefully in December. John, I sent you a couple of questions um, and we can discuss uh, uh, after after the meeting. So I know I've been reporting on that for a while. So hopefully we'll have that committee in place to be filled uh, January 1 of 2021. 20, uh, and then um, the last thing uh, is I'd like to read um, a statement. As many of you are likely aware, I was sent an anonymous letter harassing me over the weekend. An attempt was made to damage my personal property. And asking for the public's help in identifying the individual or individuals who committed these cowardly acts. If you have any knowledge of who these individuals may be, please contact the Donellan Police Department immediately. I am deeply concerned that a Donellan resident would act in this manner. This is not the Donellan I know, live in, love, and serve. 
For my entire life, I have lived it with a sense of purpose, a purpose to serve my community and make it a better place for everyone, including people like the ones who committed these cowardly acts. Even though you may disagree with me, I will continue to work for you, for your family, and for our community. To the coward who committed these acts, I have one message for you. I am not afraid. If your intention was to scare or intimidate me, I am sorry to tell you that no matter what happens in the coming weeks, I will continue to fight for the community I love. If you disagree with me or my position, I encourage you to speak with me. I think you'll find that I'm open to disagreements and finding common solutions. What I'm not open to is cowardly acts of intimidation. For those of you that have offered me support the past few days, both people I know personally very well, as well as dozens of people I don't know as well, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are the community of Den Ellen that I know, love, and serve. And my advice for everyone, vote, volunteer, and serve. By coming together as a community, we will continue to grow. I commend my fellow candidates, Kenneth Bear and Tremaine Reed, for denouncing these horrible acts. I would hope that none of us would sanction or approve this kind of behavior. Um, and before I give up my podium, um, Mr. Breeder, I don't know if this is the time to give an update on the lighting ordinance that I had asked about, um, that we had talked about, or you want to do it after the council reports? I, uh, I can do it right now. Okay. Do you mind if I just really quick? Yeah. Um, regarding DPW, um, I do want to commend you as chairperson, as well as the DPW committee, being very active to DPW, as well as Alex Miller, our public work, uh, work manager, um, specifically with the streams um, and being cleaned out uh, frequently. I have noticed that when there's heavy rains, the water dissipates very quickly and or doesn't flood at all. And I want to recognize the leadership who's made sure that DPW is operating. Um, and that includes the DPW workers themselves. You know, they deserve the credit around the applause. Um, but also a resident the other day did reach out to me and um, I'm going to leave them in an anonymous capacity. Um, well, we live on Second Street, there we go. Um, saying that they haven't seen the town this clean in a long time. They were out on a, on a fundraising 5K run and as they were running out of town, they noticed how clean the town was and they commended the DPW. So just wanted to give some good news too. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So yes, there is a resident you recalled, and if, if you are listening in, Ms. Raja, uh, you had raised a question at last council meeting about um, considering an ordinance pertaining to residential lighting, and then that was followed up, of course, by requesting uh, council to, to look into this, which I did. And in fact, through a detailed legal memorandum, but what I have what I have determined is that. Um, very few municipalities in the state have actually attempted to legislate in the area of lighting uh, with respect to residential lighting, and there appears to be good, good reason. So that means, first off, I should say that it appears that a municipality would have the authority to regulate, depending on the type of regulations. The problem comes in both the regulations themselves and the enforcement. Um, some of the municipalities I looked at that have, at least on the books, and there's very few, but the ones that have on the books any sort of regulations get technical pretty quickly. And they talk about uh, maximum vertical illumination, measuring the light at, at certain vertical heights. And for instance, I'm reading one that's in front of me just as an example that um, the maximum vertical illumination when measured from any point on the adjacent property line. At the height of five feet and facing light, it shall be no greater than 0.1 vertical foot candles. Uh, that's just by way of illustration. So, what becomes obvious as you look into it is that these regulations are virtually impossible to enforce. And that appears to be the reason why so few municipalities have even attempted to take on um, residential lighting standards. Here's another one. The maximum illumination at any point on adjoining property shall not exceed 0.2 foot candles. So rhetorically, you have to ask the question, how does a municipality ever enforce that? Does a municipality go out and purchase equipment that measures foot candle lights? Uh, and I'm not even aware that there is such equipment to measure it. And then who, and then does a municipality train employees or an employee to do that or retain an employee to do that? 
because in order to implement an ordinance like this, you have to be prepared to enforce. You know, how can you how can you cite somebody for being in violation of the ordinance? Just you can't do it simply by saying, well, that light is too bright and it shines on my house or into my window at night. You have to be able to say how exactly they violated it. And you have to have standards. And that's why that's when these standards of foot candles and lumens come into play. And again, which essentially renders it virtually impossible you know, to monitor. I did speak with one of the municipalities, one of the one of the representatives of the municipality that has such an ordinance, and they indicated to me that it's not it's not even utilized because they recognize the problem with it. They more so implemented it for purposes of commercial lighting and requirements that they could enforce on new new uh, construction, but the residential they indicate has not been enforced in quite quite a, minute, quite a few years. So in essence, many of the provisions, um, uh, because they're impossible to really implement, in that even if you implement an ordinance of this nature, which you have the authority to, you're not going to be able to enforce it. Short of you hiring somebody or, or putting that responsibility onto an employee and um, training them and then buying proper equipment to make those measurements so that you can present that in court should the person who's charged with the violation say, I disagree, I, didn't, I am not in violation of your ordinance. And also keep in mind that if you are enforcing it, by its very nature, the lighting would have to be enforced the lighting ordinance would have to be enforced at night, which means you're going to have to bring in employees overtime. Of course, because the police don't have the time, the energy, or the responsibility with all that they do to have to take on another responsibility. Typically, they're your only employees that are working at night. So, with that being said, you you would have to bring in another employee on an overtime, sort of thing. So, for all of you, and, and one other thing as well. I, that I, I think I need to mention. Every light that exists in town right now would, in essence, be grandfathered in to this ordinance, which means that any existing lighting could not be really regulated. You can't go back and tell somebody you have a violation because the rest of the back environment, you know what they'll say. This is the same light I've had here for 30 years, and now you're going to tell me it's illegal. And they can challenge you on that pre existing, non conforming sort of basis. So, so for, for those reasons, while I think a municipality may have the authority or does have the authority to come up with some sort of regulation, but nonetheless, the reason why the great, great majority of New Jersey's 565 municipalities don't have any residential lighting regulations is just this. It's virtually impossible to implement and to enforce. So that is my uh, legal summary on, on the issue that was raised. Thank you. Anything else? No, nope, that was it. And thank you for looking into that. Uh, Council Member Cole Sigmund, anything to report this evening? Okay, and then Lily gets on your back. Members Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so for Rec Department, uh, we had our Halloween parade on Saturday. The largest turnout in the last seven years. We had over 130 participants. The Rec Department is very thankful to the Mayor and Council for their help and support. Veterans Day reminder on Wednesday, November 11th at 11 a.m. at Washington Memorial Park. We will have a small ceremony. Please come out and show your support for our veterans. Uh, the food drive, next drive off dates are Wednesday, November 4th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and Thursday, November 5th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Living Hope Church at Whittier Ave. Items needed are canned food, paper products, water, personal hygiene, condiments, baby needs, pet food. And if you are in need of any of these items, pick up is Saturday, the 7th. Please contact Alex Miller, Miller of the Rec Department. All information will be kept confidential. Um, and then I have one last thing, a letter that the Municipal Alliance received. 
And it says the fiscal year 2022 municipal alliance base award for Denellen is $2,356. The funds are to be utilized to provide substance abuse prevention and education programs to the community as outlined in your plan slash application. Funding for this year, July 1, 2021 to June 30, 2022, is based on the statewide funding formula. In addition to the base award, Denellen has been awarded an additional $3,558 supplement dollar supplementary work. This is a one-time funding incentive based on availability of funds. So the total funding for the period of July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022 is $5,914. Congratulations to the Municipal Alliance on receiving this award. I know you guys did a fantastic job on utilizing the monies to help prevention and education. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Cole Sigmund, are you there now? All your problems went away? <laughs> yes, I can hear you again. Um, and as everyone can see, I am attending this meeting virtually. Uh, I am isolating until this Thursday after a close contact with a COVID positive person at work. And I believe that the safety protocols and wearing my mask at work are the reasons why I'll be able to return after only 14 days. Uh, so I, I want to encourage everyone uh, to continue to follow the recommended safety protocols, wash your hands, wear your mask, and let's all do what we can to help uh, stop this, uh, the spread of this. Um, as for... And just like that. Okay. All right, Cole. Okay. We lost you, Cole. We get call back. Okay. Well, for meetings per meeting sake, I'll go into my report. Cole, when you get back on, we'll uh we'll go back into your report. Okay. Unless you're there now. Okay. Um speaking of COVID, uh here's our COVID-19 update as of today. Uh based on Middlesex County's website, we have a cumulative total of 267 for Denellen. That's an additional 15 cases since my uh October 24th, 2020 uh update. We still have uh nine deaths. As a reminder, these are cumulative totals and are based off the information being provided by the county. Um, Denellen and Middlesex County's cumulative totals can be found at www.discovermiddlesex.com backslash total dash cumulative dash cases backslash. Uh, New Jersey COVID-19 information hub can be found at covid19.nj.gov. Um, please continue to practice social distancing and wearing of a mask as Council Member Sigmund said before he was cut off. Uh, this will prevent further spread um, and uh, prevent further spread. Um, if you are in need of assistance due to a health crisis, please contact the crisis text, uh, text line by texting NJ to 741741 or call the family helpline at 1-800-843-5437. We encourage you to utilize these resources during uh, this challenging time. Uh, regarding uh, redevelopment, uh, as Council President uh, Bayer indicated, uh, the Denali Station, which is known as Our Color, uh, CME, our municipal engineers, issued a resolution compliance report. We can say this is considered a engineering checklist for the developer. Uh, once the developer, developer fulfills their requirements associated with the development, redevelopment agreement, uh, post their bonds in escrow, and address any items needed for the construction permits, uh, they should be able to start site work. Um, we are aware that New Jersey American Water will construct the water distribution improvements uh, with their own contractor and will accept bids once the redeveloper posts the estimated improvement cost and executes the agreements with New Jersey American Water. In addition, I have spoken to Mr. Brudner, who is the uh, property owner and partner slash developer with Dayhav and Rhythm, regarding a banner or sign near the site that shows the overall development project. He has noted that he will have one up within the next few weeks. Um, just so everybody is aware, this project is moving forward. I know there's uh, some comments on social media regarding uh, the status of the art color, but it is moving forward. There's bureaucratic tape that everybody has to go through to make sure these projects 
are done appropriately in the best interest of both parties. So please be aware the project is moving forward. Um, we had, we do have another developer who's developed in town. Their name is Chelsea Builders. Uh, they'll be presenting a conceptual plan to the borough council slash redevelopment agency as the council and mayor are the redevelopment agency before the end of the year for the property address 440 North Ave. Uh, the development is being proposed as a commercial space on the bottom with residential on top. More information will come regarding this in the near future. Uh, some of our capital improvements, Railroad Avenue, CME, our engineer spoke to New Jersey Transit last week. Uh, the application for the work is being reviewed by NJ Transit's insurance. We, uh, regard, we are expected to hear back within the week regarding this project. Grove Street improvements, uh, construction is tentatively scheduled to start next week. CME is confirming the exact date with the contract and will provide um, uh, information to the borough, including the date um, that the residents' notices will be distributed and work will be uh, started. Uh, South Madison Ave improvements, the uh, contractor is acquiring their bonds and insurance and has indicated they are anxious to get started. CME, again, our engineer will be scheduling a pre-construction pre meeting uh, next week. North Avenue Colbert project, um, as you can see this evening during our meeting, uh, the borough of Denellen has been working to move this project along, having already made several updates throughout the year in our council meetings. Tonight's resolution authorizing our legal counsel to make an offer to DAPCO North Smalley uh, LLC for easements on the 66, 665 North Avenue uh, to begin after the acquisition process of this piece of the commercial property is based upon the recent commissioning of an independent formal appraisal of the purchase value of the easements. Uh, the measure that was taken this evening is another step forward in making sure that the Colbert project moves forward and therefore addresses the long-standing flooding concerns, as well as the FEMA flood map, most notably on the south side of town. Uh, the completion of this culvert project has to be the first step in requesting, in request, before requesting FEMA to readdress our flood zone map. So please, residents, be assured we are moving forward and tonight's resolution is uh, that step moving forward. Uh, regarding Altice USA, um, we did make an update over the weekend, um, but to address the public as a whole who, who maybe didn't see it, following the letter I issued in September of 2020 of Scattery Township, Robinville Township, and Hamilton Township to the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, in which I requested uh, the NJBPU to uh, investigate optimum regarding the quality and consistency of their service. Uh, representatives from their, their government affairs department did reach out to myself and borough administrator Bill Robbins they informed the borough that they had plans to upgrade services by splitting of by the splitting of two nodes, network nodes that would provide greater capacity to residents in Denellen. Um, nodes are used to distribute TV and internet bandwidth throughout the geographic area. Each node can service between 200 to 400 households. Uh, therefore, if they're splitting them, it will be doubling the size of capacity. Um, so Optimum did describe this as a means to virtually add link to an internet highway that allows customers to have greater bandwidth. Um, Optimum has informed the borough that the node splits are estimated to be completed before the end of the year. In addition, two other nodes in the borough are being triaged to determine if they can, if they have congestion and need to be split to add more capacity as well. Um, just so residents are aware, Optinum has created four channels for residents to inform Optinum of their issues. Uh, contacting them via these channels will result in them troubleshooting, uh, creating a trouble ticket, uh, and a direct repair team will assess and address the issue. You can visit them at optimum.net backslash support backslash outage. Uh, message them at optimum.net backslash chat. Uh, chat. Uh, send a tweet to at Optimum Help or call them at 1-866-950-3278. Um, two more, three more items, so don't worry, guys. Uh, regarding our com uh, community visual preference survey, uh, as part of our community vision plan process, DMR Architects has developed the downtown Denellen visual preference survey as a tool to better understand the community's preferences as we continue to welcome a redevelopment of the Nellens downtown. The survey will be open from November 1st to November 30th. It can be taken online via 
the Denellen website, www.denellen-nj.gov, or community members can up in a version of at the Denellen Public Library or Borough Hall, and just bring back to Borough Hall uh, to be counted. Uh, the survey will also be available in Spanish. Uh, following all this in December of this year, we will host a public meeting either in person or via telecommunication, obviously depending on where we are with COVID, um, to discuss the results of the survey. Really quick on Halloween, I just want to applaud and thank everybody, the entire community, for helping make Halloween safe and festive. Uh, especially want to thank the Denellen Parks and Recreation Director, Alex Miller, and the Commission for making sure we held our 72nd Halloween parade in a safe manner. Uh, thank you to the Denellen PTO for hosting Trump Retreat at Washington Memorial Park. I know uh, these were all unique. Uh, this was a unique situation this year, but I know everybody was very happy with how uh, we were able to celebrate. And again, thank you to the Police Department, Fire Department, and Rescue Squad for being at all the events that occurred that day. Um, I do have a, a, one last question uh, before we move to public. Um, to the members of the Mara House Restoration Committee, is there an update regarding some plans for the property as it was requested earlier in the year? Uh, where are we moving with this? We've been trying to set up a time and date to have a sit down meeting. Um, not all members are apparently comfortable with sitting down and meeting, so we're going to have to figure out another way to, to get our opinions and ideas back and forth. So hopefully, by the next meeting, we'll have something to share. Okay, I would appreciate that. I think the council would as well. Okay. Um, thank you, Councilmember Narvison. Any other department heads? Anybody would like to say anything before we move to the public? Okay. Yes, this is Governor Mosley, OEM. Just That's wanted to. Right. Uh, yes, just wanted to thank the council and you, Mr. Mayor, for for recognizing formally recognizing my uh, OEM deputies. Um, so that's greatly appreciated. A special thank, thanks to uh, the continual support I get from April Burke. Um, and I would also like to just recognize my deputies for their work at the uh, Trunk and Treat. Um, as you know, I, they took the uh, they took the OEM van, got it cleaned up, and they actually did the lettering that it now formally has on there, Denellen OEM. So I, re I really want to thank them for take you know participating in that effort, especially Terry um, Alberson and Gigi Mosley. They're not deputies, but they're on my committee who did the de decorations and some of the planning as well. So I just want to commend my um, my team for their continual efforts towards moving uh, OEM into the 21st century. Hey, thank you, Homer, and thank you for participating in the Trump Retreat. I know it's a good community relations uh, for OEM. Um, okay. At this moment in time, we will move the meeting to public comments. Please state your name and address and let us know your common questions or concerns and concerns. Nobody? <laughs> Without hearing any, we will close the portion of public comments. And I believe we have to make a motion to go into executive session. Yes, then the meeting ends. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Burr? Yes. Dr. John? Yes. Mrs. Marvison? Yes. Mr. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigma? Ladies yes, and gentlemen, I'm back. Oh, you're back. Oh, well, okay. Uh, did you want to finish your report? We didn't close. Do you know? Do you know where he lost your call? Okay. Call is still there. Oh, he's done. Okay. Um. Ladies and gentlemen of the public, at this moment in time, we have to go into executive session and we will not be back on the uh, go to meeting. So at this time, we are going to end the virtual meeting because the mayor and council are going into executive session.
No, and no action will be taken in the executive session. No action will be We're taken. Out of it. Just have that okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.